gonna try to not go with sunglasses, but it is insanely bright outside. What's going on everyone? Jack's here and uh, this conversation or this topic rather sort of stems from a conversation that Mrs. Jax and I were having about what should replace her aging 2012 Suburban, something that we would like to be a little more fuel efficient. And I've had some really great hybrids, I've had some really great plug-in hybrids, and I've had some really great EVs here on the channel. And I'm partial to something like an EV because, you know, that's where things are going, like it or not, we're not getting into all that right now, but that's where things are headed eventually. However, a lot of people, her included, are not super enthusiastic about necessarily diving full force into the fully EV lifestyle. I'll let her explain quickly. Is this on? Yes. Do I look cute? Yes, okay. you still look cute on take number two. I bet I look cute on take number 800. Okay. So we used to have, I don't want a purely electric vehicle. We used to have a purely electric, ve electric vehicle. So I speak from um, experience. experience. Thank you, that's the word. Because one time when someone who will remain unnamed, my husband, was driving the purely electric vehicle, he decided that he didn't need to charge it or he needed to, I don't know, see if it could go beyond its capacity. I'm not really sure, the jury is still out on that but he went all the way to the mall, far, far away, and then I had to go pick him up because he got stranded because there was nowhere to charge it, and it was a big pain, and the, you know what, and I was not happy, and I do not want a pure electric vehicle because I don't want to have to go pick him up, and I don't want to get myself stranded or like need to get my kids somewhere and I've got to charge, and it just was a lot of stress for me. I, I don't deal with stress well, and that was too much stress, so I really like the hybrid ones because then you can plug it in, and then you're using electricity and you're saving gas, but then you don't get stranded. To be fair, the Nissan Leaf had an 80 mile range. To be fair, you shouldn't have driven all the way out to the mall. So that got me thinking. I've been driving this Tucson plug-in for the past week and I really like it. And before that, I had the RAV4 Prime uh, plug-in that I really like. Not before that, like literally, like, you know, a year ago, but like in terms of plug-ins, that was the last plug-in I had. And I really liked it. In fact, I really liked it. I actually like this one better. Go check out my review of it to see why? So it got me thinking, what about you guys? Are you interested in a hybrid, a plug-in hybrid with some limited EV range or a full EV? Because I think maybe we need more of these. All right, I got about three quarters of a charge to start with. And that says an electric range of 21 miles. All right, so I came to the first stop here. This is a Volta free electric charger. And other than the inconvenience of having to back into this spot because the Tucson's charge port is on the back end, I am at my local Publix. Okay, it's over there somewhere. And they've got a couple of these chargers. There's one over here and there's one on the other side. I came to this one because it's in the shade and no one ever uses it. The one on the other side is in front of those one little 24 hour strip mall gyms. That, I don't mess with that crowd and it's, oh, just, you know, no, no, I'm not going over there. And it's only your fault if you don't hate yourself enough to do something about it. So this one, I'm gonna plug in, it's a 240, but with a smallish battery pack on the Tucson, that's enough that you could recharge, theoretically, you could recharge this in two hours on a 240. So that's pretty good. Now I'm just gonna run into Publix and grab some creamer because I need some coffee creamer. But if I could hop from here to another one down uh, in Lawrenceville, which is not too far from where I live, and then back home again, my goal is can I reach back home in this plug-in hybrid with around the same level of charge that I left with? Because if you're interested in hybrid or plug-in or EV vehicles, that's a relevant question if you're considering a plug-in hybrid. So I'm guessing that voltage shtick is that it's a billboard. This is the awful Buckhead Shore show that's filming here in Atlanta, but you get free charging. So that's cool. I mean, I can't really complain about the shameless plug for the free charging because like, I'm a YouTuber, and that's exactly what's happening while you watch this video. Oh, and FYI, the Tucson says, if I leave it on here for 45 minutes, it would be fully charged. I'm not leaving it on here for 45 minutes, but that's not that long.
All right, mission accomplished. Got the creamer. If you're wondering, it's because Mrs. Jackson's lactose intolerant, so got to get the safe for stomach stuff. Now off to the next stop. That was about 10 minutes. So we'll see how we're doing on the charge. All right, so you can see here that that actually negated the trip and we gained a mile of range. So now let's head to the next stop and see if we can do the same thing. And here's precisely why people would prefer a plug-in hybrid or regular hybrid to a full EV. Because of this shit, this is a charge point station that is not functional. It is completely out of order. And so I'm going to head over. There's another one over there. I'm going to head over there and see if I can uh, find one that actually works. Now, to be fair, I am in the suburbs outside of Atlanta where the things, uh, the charging stations, the things, the charging stations start to get a little more sparse. So you're not expecting to find a ton of these, but you know, the ones that you do find kind of need to work. So this is the pros and cons of the EV and plug-in hybrid movement. Um, Walgreens, I'm at a Walgreens, has chargers on the Charge Pro SEMA network or some crap, but you have to have a card to tap in, otherwise they don't work at all. So if you're keeping score, that's a charge point charger that was out of service. The second one that I tried to go to was for residents only of that little condo apartment townhome area. Now I came to a Walgreens where you have to have this stupid card and there's no other way of paying. There's a blink station right over there. Now, here's the thing. I'm not gonna complain about the charging options because a 240 charger will recharge this in two hours. So most of you guys, if you had a plug-in like this, you'd be charging at home and it would be enough juice to get you around your daily errands. I would have more than enough to do what I'm doing right now if I had a 240 at home. So I'm not really gonna complain about the charging options because if you have a plug-in hybrid, you don't have enough range to need more than a home charger anyway. But this does confirm Mrs. Jax's hesitancy to go fully EV out where we live in the Atlanta suburbs. So I'm gonna go check this blink station out to see if we have better luck and we'll see. And I'm at about 10 miles of EV range. So let's see if I can get to that blink station and maybe back home again before I run out. All right, that was a no-go. That was a non-starter because guess what? The blink network requires the same garbage, like some kind of touch card. Hey, look, charge companies, you're not doing anyone any favors, okay? Now, like I said, I know naysayers are gonna be like, well, this is what you get with an EV lifestyle. No, it's really not, because I could plug in at home and I'd be a full charge, and now I'm back home. I had about nine miles to spare, and I could charge it all the way back up again in two hours. So honest, honestly, I'm not that worried about it if you have a plug-in hybrid. Now, while it doesn't bother me a whole heck of a lot in terms of an EV vehicle, I do think that this is precisely why Mrs. Jax does not want to fool with a fully EV vehicle. Like she would rather have like a plug-in or a hybrid. If you drive a lot, you're probably better off going with a affordable hybrid, right? And not paying the premium to get the plug in because you know, this is a $44,000 vehicle. The RAV4 Prime is that expensive or more so. So I mean, you're paying quite a bit. You might not feel like you're getting the return on investment, but if you work relatively close to where you live and your daily errands sort of consist of what I was doing today, just kind of 20 to 30-ish miles of, you know, hopping around and there are charging options out there, then this plugin might make a lot of sense. Guys, I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Do you agree with Mrs. Jax and you think that plugins or hybrids are the way to go? Or are you ready to adopt the EV future? And hey, if you're a Tesla owner and you're watching this, let me know how you handle it. You guys have the best charging network out there hush, it's true. They do love Tesla or hate them. They've got the best charging network. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Are you considering a hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, or an EV vehicle? That's tougher to say than you might think. 
I certainly am, I know Mrs. Jax is, and if we end up getting one or decide to go with one, you can bet I will document it here. Don't forget to follow me on my other social channels, and until next time, ride safe, drive safe, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, peace.